y'all welcome back to my channel I'm Danielle and I'm the owner of Dan Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter if y'all are new to my channel I do want to let you know that you can catch my content in a few different places I have a tutorial group on Facebook I have my Drunk Flamingo Glitter group on Facebook and then my exclusive Dan Fancy Tribe which is where I offer exclusive content free digital files discount codes and group challenges each month all of those groups are going to be linked in the description in case y'all want to check them out Today's tutorial is going to be another patriotic tumbler. Um, if you guys don't know, I used to make cakes a lot. Um, I have literally crafted everything under the sun and cakes were something that I used to love doing. I have not made one in quite a while, but I always like to stay up with cake trends um, just in case I need to like whip one out real quick. So today's tutorial is kind of pulled from a fault line cake inspiration. If you guys don't know what a fault line cake is, go Google it. They're super fun. It's basically where the center part of the cake is cut out and something else is put in there that kind of pulls the cake together. So for this tutorial, we are going to be starting with a distressed American flag and then the center part or what would be the fault line of the cup um, I'm going to put kind of historic pictures that represent America, just kind of iconic photos that we would see that would kind of represent our country. Um, I do like this idea of a tumbler because pictures are going to mean different things to everybody. If y'all were born in a different time than I was, different pictures may represent your view of America. So I thought this was a really fun idea and I really love how it turned out. I have not seen anything like this before. So if you guys are ready to see how I created this fault line American flag tumbler, let's get started. Okay guys, so we are going to start with a tumbler that is spray painted with a flat white paint. And I'm just going to burn the edges of all of the pictures that I printed out. I did print them on printable vinyl. Cricut is my favorite brand to use. And I'm just going to lightly burn the edges. Since this is printable vinyl and it's not paper, it will burn a little bit differently and the edges will be a little bit thicker. So you will have to kind of pull off all of the burnt in edges so it will lay flat. And all of my images are just ones that I picked that had a meaning to me. Um, of course, your pictures may be different than mine. Um, and I did just go to Google to find these. I typically don't recommend that at all. But I don't think you can really purchase these images on Etsy or anything like that. So I just did a quick Google search. So I'm just lightly burning the edges and then kind of blowing them off or just kind of shaking the flames off and these are the images that I chose of course we have the Constitution and Birdie is chasing deer right now <laughs> So there's the Constitution. This is the hoisting of the flag after 9-11. And the next one is the famous kiss picture that happened after the war. And fun fact, these were actually strangers. This The um, military man just ran out into the street and grabbed the first nurse he saw and kissed her. And now this picture is famous worldwide. Of course, Marilyn Monroe. This scene was from the movie The Seven Year Itch. Then I have JFK. I grew up not far from where he was assassinated, so we learned about him a lot during my elementary school years when I was in Texas. And these are some others that I have. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them or not. Depends on how much room I have on my tumbler. So I just printed out a bunch of them. So we're going to see which ones all fit together. So basically what I'm going to do is just start peeling 
the decals off of the backing. Since I did burn these, sometimes they did get a little stuck, but um, once I got one edge lifted, they came up super easily. I did trim the edges of these because they were a little bit thicker, and since I was going to be layering the images, I wanted to make sure they could lay flat. And I'm also just kind of trimming some down to size. Most of these I made no larger than about two and a half, three inches. So now it's all about just arranging them how you want. Just kind of overlapping them like a collage. So I'm just trying to get things kind of smoothed down as well as I can. I decided I needed to move up this little constitution image. And that's also what I like about printable vinyl is, you know, these things are down and <laughs> I can peel them up, reposition them, all that good stuff. And the printable vinyl does not rip. And I was just burning these edges a little bit because I did kind of change what areas was going to be exposed. All right, so now my hands are covered in soot. So I just cleaned my hands off really good. And now I am going to cover this tumbler with UV resin. Now, yes, you could definitely go epoxy this one or two times. I did not have time for that today. So <laughs> I just decided to try to coat this in UV resin. I had never done this before. Um, I'd seen a couple other people use UV resin for undercoats. Um, so I decided to try it and see how it would work. So I just squirted pretty much the same amount I would use for epoxy. So I think it was maybe 15 milliliters of the UV resin and I'm just using my paintbrush and I am painting on the UV resin. I'm not doing a super thick coat. I'm just wanting these images to get covered. And after I cover my entire tumbler with UV resin, I am going to take this outside and set it outside for about five minutes. I will rotate it, let the other side cure for about five minutes, and I'm going to bring it back inside, do another coat of UV resin, and set it outside again. I prefer to use the sun if possible. I just feel like I get a much faster and harder cure on UV resin versus trying to hold the UV lamp next to it or putting it on my turner and setting up my UV lamp. The sun just cures it much faster in my opinion. Even if I do pins or keychains, I'm always using the sun. So after it has two coats of UV resin on it, I am going to sand it really well and then we will be ready for our next step. I also wanted to point out that to clean my brush with the UV resin, I just pour some acetone in a little container and slosh my brush around in it, um, kind of smushing it on the bottom, and then I'll wash it really good with Dawn soap and all the UV resin is off. So now that our tumbler has been sanded and is pretty smooth, we are going to apply our star decals. 
I also want to mention that my cup was not 100% smooth. Um, I actually liked that some of the edges on the photos were raised because it gave me a really cool texture when I was distressing the tumbler. So don't panic if your cup is not 100% smooth. You can definitely use that to your advantage. So I am going to print out some stars. I will link where I got these stars at. It was actually the same um, file that I used for my distressed wood grain tumbler. I just cropped them and deleted some of the stars that I did not need. And of course, resized them a little bit larger. So now I'm going to go remove some of the stars because I don't want the stars on top of the pictures that I have. So I'm going to peel some of these off just because I want a lot of this to be kind of the distressed flag versus the stars or the picture. So if any of my stars were overlapping the pictures, I just pulled them up because I didn't want the pictures showing through the stars. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so now I'm going to tape off the middle, which is where our fault line is going to be. So when I spray paint my cup and peel off this tape, all of those images will be revealed. I could not find my painter's tape, so we had to go with electrical tape today. This will also save you from having to remove so much of that paint with acetone and alcohol. And now I'm going to go add some stripes for the bottom part of our flag. And once we have it taped up, we're ready to spray paint. I'm going to start with a flat white spray paint so that when we do the distressing, there will be a white border around the other colors. So we're basically creating a layered paint effect. So I'm just spraying the entire cup with the white And then we're going to let that dry for a little bit. And next we're going to go in with a flat black paint. I like to use flat for most of my paints if I can because it dries a lot quicker. This is just a flat black by Rust-Oleum. And again, we're just going to spray the entire cup. Except for the bottom. Sorry, I'm out of frame, guys. My iPad was up really high, so I was having to try to hold my cup really high. Oh, you get a beautiful view of my backyard. <laughs> Sorry, there are no deer back there to watch right now. So now it is covered with the black spray paint and we're going to let this dry for a little bit. And now we're going to go in with our blue. This is brilliant blue. It is a gloss, but it's the only kind of patriotic blue that I had. And we're also going to use navy blue because I wanted that, I didn't want it to be just a flat blue. I want it to be kind of distressed again. This is Sunrise Red, also by Rust-Oleum. So now we're going to take our red and we're going to spray our stripes. I'm going to try not to get it on the area where the stars would be. 
and I did not like this nozzle. It was not cooperating with me, so I did have to change it out really quick. If you guys ever throw away your paint cans, I'm sorry if y'all can hear Birdie sneezing, um, save your good nozzles so you can replace them on cans that don't have good nozzles or the nozzle gets clogged. So now that my nozzle is fixed, we're just going to spray it on the bottom half of the cup, right where the stripes would be. So now our bottom half is covered in red and black and white. So that is what it should look like. And now we're going to go in and do the blues. So we are going to start with our brighter blue and just kind of spray sporadically. I wasn't covering the whole thing. I did want that grunge distressed look. So once we have some of that brilliant bright blue on there, we're going to go back in with the navy and we're going to spray that the same way, just kind of random spots all over the top part of the cup. And after we have this paint on our tumbler, we're going to set it aside and let it dry really good because you definitely don't want to be handling this cup if it's still wet. So this is what it should look like. I know my lighting is not the best. So once this tumbler is completely dry, we're going to remove all of the tape that is on there. Now this is our center tape. So you can see already that those photos are now revealed. And then we're going to go peel off all of these stars. I do like to use these tweezers. They are the best thing ever when you're trying to peel up decals. These are obviously not my newer ones. <laughs> They're covered in paint epoxy. I think one tip is missing from one side, but they still work. I have like five other pairs somewhere, but I don't want to ruin all of them. All right, so once we get all of our stars and tape off, we are going to be ready to distress some of these parts. So you're going to need alcohol and acetone and some type of cloth. I typically just use my yellow microfiber towels I get from Costco. They have a huge pack that I use throughout the year. So basically what we're going to do is start with our acetone and we're just going to distress the edges a little bit. And if you have fake nails like me, you have to be careful. Try not to get the acetone on them. This is why I do my own nails because I don't wanna pay $50 to get them done and then have them ruined by acetone the next day. All right, so we're just going to keep doing this. When your microfiber towel or whatever cloth you're using gets dirtied with the paint, you need to find a new section to 
to, to use. Because if you don't, it's going to keep putting that paint back onto your cup. So I'm just kind of rubbing the edges of the little flag just to reveal some of the images that I want revealed. And move that thought line up a little bit. And next we're going to go back with our alcohol and we're going to rub off all of that paint residue. Acetone is really good at removing all of the paint, whereas the alcohol will remove paint residue and it will help you distress the top layer of paint so you get that really good distressed look. So it won't remove all the paint, just a little bit. So I'm really just focusing on the edges so that we see that white, black, and blue coming through. And then if there are any kind of textured areas where the pictures weren't super smooth, I'm focusing on those areas and distressing them even more just to give a little bit more dimension to the cup. So I am just scrubbing along with my alcohol just to get those edges distressed. And then I'm also going to go distress some areas of the blue. So this will reveal some of the black that's underneath the blue. And I'm also going and distressing the top rim of the cup. And again, this is all just with alcohol. If you want to distress, use alcohol. If you want to remove the paint, use acetone. So now that the top part is done, we're going to move on to the bottom half. Well, I thought I was done. <laughs> So now we're going to go in with acetone and the bottom half of the cup. And again, we're just going to remove and distress some of that sharp line. And once we have removed the paint with acetone, we're going to go remove the paint residue and distress a little bit with the alcohol. And I really like how this gives the illusion that kind of part of a flag was kind of ripped off 
to reveal these pictures. I thought it was a really cool effect. And I am debating on keeping this cup for myself. But we will see. So you're just going to do this until you're happy with how your lines look, how the distressing looks. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. Um, you guys can kind of see how I do it. I do go and distress some of the lines as well on the bottom, just so that the stripes are not so sharp. And once we are done with this step, we're going to add some more distressing with some paints and liquid silver leaf. This is the silver leaf that is liquid that y'all obviously cannot see the label. I will link it below. And we're just going to use some black acrylic paint. Any acrylic paint you have will work just fine. Um, this liquid leaf I use a lot. I mainly use the gold, but I also use the silver sometimes. Um, if you are going to use this, you definitely need to shake it really, really well because it does separate. So I don't have a lot of this left, so I am going to get a little stir stick and just stir it up really well. So this is what it looks like. It's just a silver additive. And I'm using a coarse brush. This is just a little chip brush. You can get these for super cheap at Walmart. If I can find some on Amazon, I will link them below as well. And I am just getting the smallest amount on my brush and just kind of adding some distressed brush, brush strokes to the tumbler. And I'm doing the same thing on the bottom. And I'm kind of focusing on the outline, like where the red and white meet. And I always start with just a little, and then you can always go back and add more if you want. It's a lot harder to remove paint that you apply. So now I'm going to go in with some of this silver. Since I don't have a lot left, I'm just kind of <laughs> adding it to my brush. I'll place like a drop or two on my paper. It really just takes a tiny bit to get the color on your cup. And I really like how it gives that metallic sheen and it looks really cool under epoxy. So we are just kind of adding silver, kind of on top of the black, and then don't forget to add it to the bottoms as well. We don't want the bottom to look too bare. We want it to all kind of tie together. So you're just going to do this until you're happy with it. And then we're going to apply our first coat of epoxy. So now we're going to apply our epoxy. I use Artistry's 1 to 1 ratio fast set. It is the best fast setting epoxy I have tried. There are close to zero bubbles and I get such great coverage even with one coat. I do have a discount code for y'all if you want to check them out. I will typically use 20, 25 mils on my first coat. And we're just smoothing everything out. You wanna make sure that everything is covered nicely, but not too heavy that you're going to have ripples or globs or uneven surface. And I just barely put epoxy on the bottom. 
I don't want it to sit uneven. And then I always wipe from bottom to top just to smooth everything out. And once my epoxy is smooth, I am going to take my torch and pop all of the bubbles. I usually hold my torch on the cup, moving up and down for about 14 seconds because that's how long it takes for one full rotation. So after this epoxy cures, their fast setting epoxy is cure in about two hours. I will wait about four hours to sand it. I just like to be safe. But this is what it looks like after one layer of that epoxy. Super shiny, great coverage. So now we're going to sand the rim. I typically will use a 60 to 80 grit sanding block. And I'm going to angle it and we're just going to basically scrub around the edge. And what this does is remove one to two millimeters of epoxy and paint so that the stainless rim is exposed so that when we apply our final layer or two of epoxy, we are 100% sure that everything is sealed in. It has a great seal and smooth rims. I am also going to buff the body of the tumbler just to smooth out any imperfections that may be there. And once we smooth everything out, I am just going to wash this with Dawn dish soap, dry it really well, and then pop it back on the turner for the final one to two layers of epoxy. Um, I do not wipe my cups down with alcohol or anything like that. I just wash them with Dawn and then clean them with a microfiber towel. And once your cup cures, you will be done. And here is another just quick video of how pretty the cup looks on the turner. I just loved how this cup turned out and I hope you guys can draw inspiration and add your own photos or your own take on this tumbler. And here are some finished pictures. I just love the distressed look. I'm typically not a huge fan of non-glittered tumblers but this one is probably in my top five cups that I've done. I just love how it turned out so much. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or my damn fancy tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.